Hey, welcome to Growing a Messiah. If you're new to this channel, my name is Caleb Hegg, and today we are going to continue our look at the difference between the Catholic faith and Protestantism. And uh, I did a video introducing this series where I just ran down the, uh, the major theological divides um, between the Catholics and the Protestants. And today I'm going to focus in on one of the major divides, uh, which was in that list, and that is the difference in the canon. When we say the word canon, what we're referring to is the scriptures. Canon comes from the word canon, which means accepted. And so the question really is, is what books do we accept as God breathed or the word of God? And the Catholics accept 73 books, whereas the Protestants, us Protestants, only accept 66 books. Why is this? Well, there are seven books and or we could call them editions or books. We'll call them books for the sake of this um, for the sake of this video. They are Tobit, Judith, first and second Maccabees, Wisdom, Sirach, Baruch, and then additions to the book of Esther and Daniel. And if you're familiar with the, the book uh, Bell and the Dragon, that's actually the addition to the book of Daniel. And these books have been held in some uh, high regard for pretty much since their existence by both Judaism and Christianity to some extent. Now, with that said, uh, Judaism has never accepted the Apocrypha as part of the canon. And this is actually an interesting point. This is one of the reasons that the Christians have not accepted or the Christians did not accept the um, Apocrypha books up until the Reformation. And we'll talk more about that in a, in a few moments. But basically... What you have is the, uh, so let's let's talk about a specific instance. The Jews, uh, the Jewish canon is, does not include the Apocrypha. However, Judaism as a whole has accepted some things uh, from the Apocrypha. So for instance, First and Second Maccabees is the story of Hanukkah. And uh, when the, the armies came in and took over the temple and, and decimated the temple, the Maccabees fled and they went up into the hills and then they come back and they destroy uh, Antiochus Epiphanes and, um, and they reclaim the temple and they ded dedicate it to God. So this is the story of the Maccabees. It's celebrated as a festival within Judaism every single year, usually around December time. Uh, sometimes it can be as early as November, but it's usually November or end of November into into December sometime. And sometimes it overlaps with Christmas as well. Um, not the point. The point here is that uh, even Judaism, even though they rejected these books, have found some benefit from the apocryphal books. So with that said, why is it that we would, uh, that we Protestants would reject the the uh, seven books that the Catholics have uh, have accepted into their canon? The Apocrypha didn't actually come to be um, revered until the writing of the Septuagint. Now, the Septuagint, okay, there's a little bit of history that needs to go into this. Actually, there's a lot of history that needs to go into this. But the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Torah or the actually the Tanakh, the, uh, the Old Testament. And so when the, uh, when the Septuagint was written, they added, they put the... Um, they put the uh, apocrypha into in with the uh, with the Septuagint, and they did this. Basically, uh, this started to happen really when we get a codex, and a codex. Think of a codex simply as a fancy word for a book. So the Christians are the ones who really came up with and started um, binding books, binding a a, a uh, the Bible into uh, a book form. When they did that, they put the Apocrypha in the back of the book. Well, the Jews, they actually rejected the Apocrypha and they really didn't have, uh, didn't have books. They had scrolls. And so there's a little bit of kind of uh, a debate among even Jews whether or not the, the uh, Apocrypha should be in, in the Bible. And actually, F.F. F. Bruce in his book, uh, the book and uh, books and parchments. Uh, he says this, he says they, and this is actually about um, if you've heard of Jamnia or Yavne is another way to, to say it. Uh, the, the council of Yavne. If you've heard of this council, this is in the first century. And this is when the Jews are attempting to close the old Testament canon. This is what F.F. F. Bruce says. He says they debated the canonicity of a few books like Ecclesiastes 
but they changed nothing and never proclaimed themselves to be the be authoritative determine of the Old Testament canon. The books, which they decided to acknowledge as canonical, were already gen, uh, gener generally accepted, although questions had been raised about them. Those, which they ref refused to admit, had never been included. They did not expel from the, can from the canon any book which had previously been admitted. The Council of Yamnia was the confirming of public opinion, not the forming of it. So basically what he's saying is, is that uh, the canon had already essentially been set, and what that means is that the canon was already decided on. What they did at Yavne is they simply closed the Old Testament canon. And at the time, the Jews didn't believe that the Apocrypha should be in the canon. In fact, even to this day, the Jews do not accept even First and Second Maccabees, which the story of Hanukkah is in, they don't accept that as canon. And there's actually others that didn't accept the uh, Apocrypha as canon either. So, for instance, one of the oldest lists of the of the canon written by Christians is uh, the Moratorian canon, and that excludes the books of the Apocrypha. And so this is another reason that we would say that, that even later, this is a, a later fragment, but even later, the Apocrypha was not being seen as, um, as canonical. And... Uh, there are church fathers, for instance, Origen and uh, Tertullian both rejected the Apocrypha as scripture. Now, this isn't to say that they just said no one should read these books. No, they found wisdom in these books. But beyond that, we do need to recognize that there are some uh, theological and uh, there are some theological errors within these books, and there are historical errors as well. Now, with all, we need to be fair, and we need to just simply say that uh, within Catholic scholarship, there are uh, people who uh, have uh, discussed and refuted the notion that there are errors in the um, in the the Apocrypha. But with that said, we also need to recognize that uh, for Protestants, we reject Catholic theology uh, on a larger level, and so. Um, there are theological differences as well, obviously, within these books. Um, so it, there's good evidence, sorry, there's good evidence that the Apocrypha was not actually accepted as canon. So how did it get then into the Catholic canon? I actually believe that this was a strategic move, and actually I think it's a move of brilliance uh, in a power struggle of the Reformation. Basically what you have is the Catholic Church is pretty much in charge, and then there are these people who start to push against the Catholic Church. And what I mean by that is you have people like Luther and Calvin and uh, Tyndale, Wycliffe, all these guys who are now pushing against the authority of the church, and they're starting to question some of the theologies of the church as well. And so... One of those things is, in fact, the canon, and not necessarily the canon. We shouldn't say that. It's actually just the the availability of the scriptures. They wanted to put the scriptures, Tyndale and Wycliffe and um, Luther, they wanted to put the scriptures into common language. They wanted to do this so that the average person could read the Bible. The Catholic Church didn't want this, and the reason why is because they felt like if the average person had access to the scriptures, they'd misinterpret it. And uh, in some ways, they might have been right that the average person just reading a passage might not fully understand it. But that's no reason to not give the scriptures to people. In fact, um, I think that people should learn and understand the scriptures as best they possibly can. Anyway, with all of that said, uh, what changed within the Catholics? Well, the strategic move that I referred to earlier came about at the Council of Trent. The Council of Trent actually was a response. It's We call it the Counter-Reformation. It was a response to the Reformers. And what they did was they got together from 1545 to 1563. Now, it, the Council of Trent did not actually last that long. They had various meetings, and then they had a final meeting, and that's what we consider the Council of Trent. So this actually uh, it happened over 18 years. And basically what happens is they discuss all sorts of different things that have to relate with the Protestants or those who are pushing now against the Roman Catholic Church and the Catholic Church itself. And so what was it that they did at the Council of Trent? Now, this is where we have to be a little bit careful because those who hold to Roman Catholicism and or let's just say Catholicism will tell you that they did not in, they did not add any books to the canon. They're going to say that what actually happened is they just confirmed books that were already in the canon. 
And various examples are pointed to. So for instance, the King James Bible of 1611, and this is after the Council of Trent, so there's this might be a reason, but uh, the 1611 had the Apocrypha in it. Granted, it was at the end of the book. So the Apocrypha was actually placed at the end of the book. But the point is, is that there were uh, apocryphal books within the canon, within the scriptures up before the Council of Trent. This is true, but the placement of where they were within the within the codices actually is significant. They were placed after the canonical books and they were done so to say that these books are not on the same level. They're not on the same par as the canonical books. Well, at the Council of Trent, they decided that they were going to affirm that these books were part of the canon. Now, why is this a strategic move? Well, it's actually a brilliantly uh, placed move by the Catholic Church because they knew that the Protestants would reject the apocryphal books as canon. And if the Protestants rejected the books that the Catholic Church said were canon, then what they could do was they could point to the uh, to the Protestants, Protestants and tell their congregants, see, look, these people are heretics. They don't even accept the scriptural books of the Bible. And you, you know, you shouldn't listen to these people because they don't even believe that the Bible is the Bible. And that is not exactly true. What actually was going on is that the Protestants had affirmed what had always been going on, which is that the uh, apocryphal books had never been accepted as on the same par as the scripture. Now, it would take us a really long time to go through and look at all of the um, all of the different errors and or uh, historical flubs that we see within the Apocrypha. The theological errors, there are uh, theological errors. Uh, Tobit seems to be the one that has the most the theological um, uh, no-nos in it. Um, however, there are some pretty pretty big ones in other books as well. Anyway, I, I hope that this has done uh, something to maybe get your thoughts kind of uh, moving in uh, that direction, in the direction of trying to understand the formation of the canon. And also, I hope that this has uh, described a little bit of the historical background of this controversy between the Catholic Church and the Protestant. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel. We would really appreciate it. And I will see you in our next video.